Hey y'all, welcome back to the Broom Wagon. Uh, got a lot of ground to cover this week. Good, the bad, and the ugly from the tour down under. Got the neutral zone news, got the Musette Musings tweet of the week. I'm gonna take a look at two jerseys as well from uh, the French Peloton, <laughs> for better or worse. Uh, all of that coming up on the Broom Wagon. Okay, everybody, let's get right into the racing tour down under, the biggest race in Australia. A lot of the top professionals uh, in professional cycling coming from Australia, Rowan Dennis, Simon Garens, Richie Port, Caleb Ewan, uh, long history of exceptional cyclists from uh, down under, as it were, from Australia, Southern Hemisphere, and the best in the overall race for the Tour Down Under was Richie Port of the BMC squad. Richie Port dominated stage two and stage five, uh, won the race by almost a minute. The question is, and you can look up all those results on uh, a variety of uh, websites, the question is for us, is Richie Port peaking too soon? Is that too much, too early? Uh, the Tour de France is a long ways away, but I, what I like about Richie Port's uh, performance in the Tour Down Under is that his team, BMC has said, he's the sole leader for the Tour de France, and this is his first chance to race and prove to them that he's up to the task uh, and ready for the challenge. Winning a UCI professional stage race, never early, I mean, excuse me, never easy, <laughs> uh, but Richie Port, great form early in the year, I don't really think that that's going to be a problem for Richie Port moving for forward throughout the rest of the summer. In fact, I think he might very well be Chris Froome's toughest challenge in this year's Tour de France. Very close to a podium last year, flat tire on stage number two uh, for Richie Port, um, where he lost a lot of time. Without that, he would have been on the podium time-wise. You know, Quintana, Bardet might have raced a little bit differently. Uh, if Richie Port was threatening their position in the overall standings, but be that as it may, I think Richie is going to have a great year. Sole leader of BMC in the Tour de France. You heard it here first. Podium at this year's Tour. <laughs> also to the good in the Tour Down Under, Caleb Ewan. Four stage wins. If Richie Port didn't win a stage, Caleb Ewan did. <laughs> That was the only two stage winners in the whole Tour Down Under. So uh, Caleb Ewan, great start to the year. Um, brilliant sprinting. The top sprinters, uh, Sagan was there, but uh, Kittle, Cavendish, Greipel, not there. And uh, a lot of the other leading lights in the sprints in Europe, not there at that race. And I think Caleb showing progress, continued promise as uh, uh, the next dominant sprinter. I don't think he'll get there this year against all of the other top sprinters, aforementioned top sprinters, but eventually he will. Watch these sprints. He has the most radical position, and this requires work. Uh, this requires practice, uh, and you can't just say to yourself, uh, I think I'll get real low, <laughs> present an incredibly narrow aerodynamic profile, and be able to go that much quicker in the sprints. You don't just rock up to a pro race and do that. You have to practice that for uh, many years before you can perfect that. And Caleb Ewan, he's taken Mark Cavendish's playbook and gone up another notch. So he's going to be a very, very tough man to beat in the sprints in the years to come. I think the status quo in the sprints will be very similar. It might not be Cavendish as dominant as he was last year, but Kittle most certainly will be up to the task. Uh, Christoph might be sprinting well also, and uh, Andre Greipel always consistently spectacular, and I think Cav will get his licks in as well. Amanda Spratt won the women's Tour Down Under. She's on the Orica squad, so a lot of pressure. Uh, her, She and her teammates also won uh, the team classification, so great riding by the Orica rider Amanda Spratt in the women's race. The bad, Simon Garens. I mean, not bad, you know, per se, but not great by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, has won Tour Down Under in years past, but this year, not uh, 
great form. He did help Esteban Chavez to second place in the overall standings when it became apparent he would not be competitive for uh, the overall title. So did some good work, but uh, not his best effort. And I think we'll see him improve a lot uh, in the months to come over in Europe, especially. The Ugly. Look at this crash by Gorka Izaguirre. Really tough to watch. Uh, it looks like he just runs out of room as the Katusha rider is coming back through the field. And boom, hits the deck. He was sitting in second place in the overall standings at this point. Uh, he did pick himself up. He did get to the finish. A very tough ride by Gorka Izaguirre. That is the ugliness. Ugh, don't like to see that at all. Okay, let's take a gander at the jerseys. First up, F. DJ. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I've made any uh, bones about this not being my favorite of all the kits out there. Um, and it's sometimes a little better, sometimes a little worse from year to year. This is not one of their best efforts. <laughs> Even though uh, their best efforts in the past have not been that handsome either. Not my favorite kit. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Maybe you love the FDJ kit. AG2R. Very controversial. The uh, um, the very sharp white and light with light blue highlights uh, juxtaposed with the brown. <laughs> and I don't know if that's the corporate uh, color scheme or where they came up with this particular uh, set of colors, but it, it just does not look that good. I think if the brown was black, it might be a little bit less distinctive, but I think it would look a lot better. Uh, but it's been like this for a long time. I don't mind it that much, but it's most definitely not my favorites. Like I said, let me know what you think down below. All right, everybody, ex uh, next up, uh, the Neutral Zone News. Neutral Zone News, Nairo Quintana in the news, going to do the Giro and Tour de France double. I believe the last time that was executed successfully was 1998, Marco Pantani, who sadly is no longer with us. Um, Nairo has said that he's going to use the Giro, however, as preparation for the Tour de France, which I think is an improvement from what he did last year. Uh, whereby he had just one small stage race for many, many weeks before the Tour de France. Uh, and I don't think he was 100% ready for the Tour. He didn't have enough racing days, didn't have enough hard racing days. The classic uh, preparation scenario nowadays, uh, Romandie after Paris-Nice or Tirreno or Catalonia, Tour of Romandie, uh, Dauphiné, and then Tour de France. That's the most successful template. If you don't employ that, you are tempting the fates. <laughs> Chris Froome, who's used that uh, template to win the Tour de France, um, will punish you. <laughs> um, I don't... Nairo, now let's remind ourselves, didn't have a great tour, but was spectacular in the Giro. So I think what he's in his mindset is, I'll do the Giro and then I'll be flying at the Tour, even if I'm not competitive in the Giro. But the Giro, uh, very, very difficult technical, dangerous stage race, and uh, narrow roads, tough climbs throughout, I really don't think it's the ideal preparation for the Tour de France, even if you're taking it easy. A rider like Nairo Quintana, the chances of him taking it easy are zero. If he feels good, he's going to go for it, and it would be very disappointing if he doesn't win. He's won the Giro before, so I think uh, if it doesn't work this year, we'll see Nairo adopt a similar race program that has been very successful in the Tour de France. Uh, but best of luck to Nairo doing the double. we got to uh, give him congratulations for attempting it. All right. Got another cancel race, y'all. Tour of the Med. Lights out. Cutter, uh, I announced last week, was also uh, on the chopping blocks. It looks like Tour of Cutter will come back in 2018, but for now it's done. I'm very sad. The opening... Uh, race in France and the French Peloton has historically been the Tour of the Med and uh, it's sad for them to uh, to be exiting. I think the UCI would be advised to maybe not put so much resources into a race like the Tour of China 
uh, or some of the other esoteric far-flung stage races that they put a lot of money and effort into and keep the tour of the med <laughs> on the schedule. Uh, it just baffles me. Uh, we're going to get to that a little bit later in uh, the Muset Musings. Uh, my <laughs> ongoing difficulty with the management at the UCI. Owen Duell, last week, if you remember, was having a frozen Coke at McDonald's. Thanks, everybody, for commenting. It turns out that's a Slurpee, what we call Slurpees, which uh, uh, 7-Eleven, I think, has a trademark on that. Or a uh, slush slushy slushy uh, but let's say uh, frozen coke is a slurpee for now um, just after that Owen Duell was unable to start the tour down under it turns out it wasn't just gastrointestinal distress that was appendicitis that has been removed he spent some days in the hospital I uh, had to have surgery for that um, but a speedy recovery to Owen Duell and um, I now know what a frozen Coke is. <laughs> Not sure I'll be ordering one, uh, but if it has cane sugar instead of high fructose corn syrup, I might give it some consideration. All right, everybody, next up, the Musette Musings. Next up, the Musette Musings featuring once again, Brian Cookson, president of the UCI. I'm going to start this critique, this criticism, that's uh, quickly turning into cynicism for his uh, tenure as UCI president. When he was elected, he promised reforms. He promised uh, no compromise in the fight against doping. Um, thus far, if you followed the, <laughs> the music musings, that has not been the case as far as I'm concerned. Um, also, um, if you watch the Muset Musings regularly, you've noticed, uh, you've seen <laughs> a number of videos about an ongoing controversy in British cycling um, involving the former um, national coaching director, Shane Sutton, um, who I would imagine worked alongside Brian Cookson when Brian Cookson was president of UK Cycling. So. They have a long history together um, uh, before Brian Cookson became president of the UCI. So I'm not sure why it comes as a surprise to me that he's taken Shane Sutton's side um, in the ongoing controversy of bullying, sexism, and discrimination against uh, some of the women athletes. Um, that, by the way, I find believable. All of their evidence is... Uh, uh, very credible, and the Paralympians also in the British cycling program. Uh, so this is what um, this is what Brian Cookson said about Shane Sutton just recently. Perhaps a number of people didn't find his approach quite so comfortable, but many did, and the proof of the pudding is in the eating, in the medals that were secured. If you look around for all the people that have said negative things about Shane, there are also people that said very positive things about Shane. He's someone who I have great respect for. So apparently, if we are to understand what Brian Cookson is saying, is that medals are more important than a safe, fair working environment for the athletes. That is Brian Cookson's message, <laughs> who is the president of the UCI. Um, this is really disturbing, inexcusable, and Brian Cookson, Cookson should remove himself as president of the UCI immediately. Um, he went on recently also to say this about Bradley Wiggins. He would be surprised. <laughs> Brian Cookson, let me quote him directly. Uh, I would be surprised if Bradley Wiggins was cheating. <laughs> maybe maybe you weren't uh, following cycling that closely for the last hundred years. Um, I don't know if it... Okay, I'm going to ask all the viewers out there. Um, would you be surprised <laughs> if any cyclist was found to have cheated to get ahead in the sport of cycling? Um, but 
Uh, be that as it may, what this reminds me of is the former uh, presidency of Pat McQuaid and before that Hein Verbruggen of collusion and willful uh, denial of obvious happenstance. So if, if, <laughs> if you're, let me ask you guys this, if you're um, David Brailsford and you're Brian Cookson and you're Bradley Wiggins and you have this ongoing controversy, what exactly is the difference between uh, Lance Armstrong, Johan Bernil, and Pat McQuaid? What, what exactly is the difference? Um, when we are in the middle of critiquing uh, Pat McQuaid's presidency and the U.S. Postal Discovery uh, Channel cycling teams, and what we found out later on. Um, so <laughs> what exactly is the difference between what we're going through now with Cookson and uh, British Cycling and, and Dave Brailsford and Bradley Wiggins um, compared to years past? Please let me know in the comments section. I would say a lot of the things are very similar and it's not a surprise. We've faced this for many generations in, in, uh, in cycling. And Brian Cookson, let's remind, remind ourselves, promised to do something about it and has thus far not done anything about it, as far as I can tell. The one positive thing he's done is term limits. <laughs> and uh, and um, if that's his legacy, it's a, a pretty, pretty uh, low back. Uh, but anyways, let me know what you think. Brian Cookson, the right man for the job or in need of immediate replacement, or somewhere in between. <laughs> okay, next up, the Tweet of the Week. This is coming to us from Chris Froome. Froome and Z Deutsch getting it done on the, on the, what is this, wakeboarding? Wake surf, wake surfing. Wow! <laughs> Chris Froome is a pretty exceptional athlete. If you can just pop up on a, a wakeboard and start surfing behind a boat so they make a wake and uh, I'm not sure if it's as easy as Chris Froome is making it look, but I very seriously doubt it. Growing up in uh, semi-rural Kenya, I would have I would be surprised. This is one thing I would be surprised about if Chris Froome what grew up wakeboarding <laughs> or wake surfing, as the case may be. <laughs> um, but it's going to be a very tough man to beat in the Tour de France. Chris Froome can do it all. All right, everybody, thanks a lot. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Thumbs up, greatly appreciated. Comments, got a lot of information. Please comment on any or all of it. And um, if you'd like to subscribe, click on my face. If you would like some merchandise, click on the t-shirt icon. And thank you very much for watching. Till next time.